Well, we've just watched the first segment of my interview with the famous artist Stanislas Koska. I'm working on the editing right now. Um, oh dear, I think the light might be shining off the top of my head. I uh, have to speak to the makeup people about that. Yeah. In any event, it's interesting to see at the end of that segment when he mentioned I'm from a communist country and so let's look into his life a little further because I'm anxious to find out about it myself. I thought I knew a fair amount about Stanislaus, but here comes some more. Follow me. I'm coming from communist country. And uh, right. in my country, about that. in this time, we have no advertising, nothing, and no color. Everything been great. We have ugly car, ugly color <laughs> out of the street, and we have the communist, you know, people yeah. who are running the country. You can say anything what you want. You, you have to be always, you know, in the right place. If you're not, you're going to another place. You Boy, know? I would be a, very honest. <laughs> I'd have been a candidate for Siberia. Oh, yeah. And that then place. like I'm coming, you know, in France, everything be new, colors, you know, all this new thing, advertising, name, you know, Cinzano. Uh, cigar, all this kind of stuff. Everything we knew completely what I've never seen before. I have to learn any one sign what you see because your kids from the from this much big for me being brand new. I have to learn everything from. Now let me scratch. ask you, you: you left Poland, you spoke Polish, but you yeah. go to France. Now you have to speak French. Uh, yeah, I have to speak French. Then I have to learn language. So you learned French. So yeah. French, Polish, and. I guess we'll figure out how he got here. And I have Russian already because in Poland we have the second language would be in Russian. Oh, I didn't know that. Second yeah, language obligatory was language. Obligatory language. Just oh. like here, you know, you, you, you start school, second language is almost Spanish. Or Spanish or yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. French. Well, you know, a lot of people are taking Chinese now. <laughs> okay. <But anyways. laughs> <Why not? laughs> yeah, they are. But anyways, okay, so there you are. And you're in Paris, you're married, you got two kids. And all of a sudden, the world gets bright. Is that where all this color comes from? Because your paintings, everything you do seems so colorful. So is that because all of a sudden, boom, uh -huh. the world got colorful? Uh, you know, this is, this is not a story because I'm buying the color. <laughs> My color, story. it's a color coming from Amsterdam. It's done in Belgium. It's hand-made color. And the way how I'm doing, you know, my painting, I'm always using the very sharp color with hands prepared. Like doing, you know, I didn't fun. do it. I didn't touch anything. And you know, my stretcher coming, you know, from France. It's no eye and the wood. All stuff is prepared by hands. It is exactly like 17th century, you know, masterpiece done in old fashion with oak wood keys. Linen canvas coming from Belgium and my color okay. coming okay. also what from Belgium. What made you want to, how did you, in your mind, um, you, you come from a communist country and everything is gray, everything going, and all of a sudden you're painting these very vibrant colors in your paint. What, what made you want to do this kind of art with flowers and this color? What, what made you want to do that? You, see my, you could have done anything. My school in, uh, my first school, in Warsaw, being the art of the conservatory, you know, this means I'm doing the restoration of the old master, and I'm start to feel the love, you know, uh, of old master work, and understand how we prepare the canvas, okay. how we doing the work, and I've been always amazed, like these pieces from you know 1600, 1700, still have this color and this power today, much more stronger than the color acrylic or any modern color what you're using today which not going to stay for a long time. This color, you know, can, has been can prepared. Can I show it on this? Here's, can, you, can, yeah. you, can we get this? I want to I show the, the color, how it starts. Yeah. Um, these are all these different colors, vibrant colors. And then he's got, you got uh, a big mess uh, in the, the basket. Oh, we got a big mess in the basket. Yeah. You see? There's what the I'm big buying, mess in I'm the basket. I'm buying my color and then, you know, use and it's going to this basket, you know. Oh. And then I'll have to find again this color <laughs> if the color is over, you know. <laughs> so this is not a, uh, a science uh, doing this. It's uh, definitely an art. Um, let me 
Can I ask you about some of the things in the room? Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, how do you hold a brush? Oh, you know. Okay. Actually, we just changed the battery in the camera. Oh, and I I've been it. watching Stanislaus paint. Um, I'm not sure quite how you do it. This is, you put your hand, you put this on the painting. Yeah, this is just to not touch the canvas like you painted, you see? I see. This is to protect, to not go with the hands inside of your detail because I'm working with the, with the end of the brush making you know the whole this little this detail fantastic. inside of the guys, road. Guys, it's just fantastic. I can't believe we're learning. We're in this studio with this guy and he's telling us all about how, to, if he tells me any more how to do it, I'm just gonna go do it, what the heck? Um, yeah. Um, how do you hold a brush? Like a pencil or how, how do you hold the brush? Show me how you hold the brush. You see, this is the same way like I am have the Chinese food, little baguette, you know? Yeah. The, the, the piece of the wood, you know, like you have the Chinese food. A chopstick. The same chopstick, yeah. Yeah. That's the same way. Just, you know, I am just have the full control of my brush. Oh, can, can, I, can I try it? Can yeah, I take one of these up? Take it. Take yeah, it. really? Yeah, go ahead. Anyone? <laughs> Anyone. Oh, okay, anyone. Here yeah. we go. And, and then uh, you see, you have the control, you see like you're moving your brush, you're going, you see like you're doing this stuff, you're doing, you know, always little touch in the bottom. Then you're drawing with your brush, you see, like I'm drawing, you see, let's go see, like you have to make this little petal inside. You're drawing with your end of the brush, the detail in the flowers. And it takes really long time because I have to put the shade and I have to put, you know, the whole the detail in the painting. Up. You know, I think it needs a little more red. <laughs> Don't you think it needs a little more red? Yeah, red is, you know, oh, you just already, you see your brush <laughs> have to be... <laughs> what? Very Stop smooth. eating my brush. He's eating my brush. Yeah, no, no, it just have to be, you know, like little points. Then if you're going, you have the whole the detail, you know. Oh yeah, of ready course. Ready to go. And of course. You see, it's like we have these roses here. Roses. Yeah. It's, it's just going, you know, really slowly. Nothing to it. I get it. Okay. Um, you sure you don't need more red, huh? No, no, not for the moment. For the moment, I have to f make the form of the flowers oh, to yeah. have the right proportion. Of course. Color coming, you know, after. Then you see, like I'm going. <laughs> What's yeah. a razor blade for? To slit your throat if you can do something wrong? No. <laughs> Thunk. Razor blade. This is like. You go in a, yeah, I'm backing to painting and you have some hair, you know, in the, oh, in the yeah. canvas. Yeah, that happens all the time, sure. Always, uh, you know. Ah, it's like when you paint a room and the You know, you have to hold the, the gilet brush. in special right. way. You see, like, you never cut your canvas because if you cut <laughs> the canvas, you lost already the whole sketch. You have to start from beginning everything. Yeah, yeah, even I understand that. Honest, if you cut the canvas, you're screwed. Okay, so, yes. um, yeah, all right. Um, You're taking, you know, hold this hair out from here, you see. <laughs> it, this is like you're doing big large painting. This is like you're doing wall. Yes. This, you have to go and very precise touch, you see. You have to draw in, you see. How slow. close do you think he's gonna let me get to this? No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry, don't hurt me, I won't do anything wrong. Well, maybe okay. not. All right, I got that. Well, let me ask you something here, put that down for a minute. Because, you know, we only got as far, you're still in Paris, and I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, uh, I'm near Aspen, Colorado right now, is where he is. And um, so you left... He's not listening to me. Yeah, Things were yeah, married, I think. Good. Oh, here he comes. Anyways, uh, so you're in Paris. Yeah. Two kids, but you ended up in the United States. Oh, I yeah, know you're a citizen of the United States. I know Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so 
How did you get here? I mean, what made you want to come here? How'd you get here? Where'd you go? How'd you get here? Uh, this has been another step, you see. I'm working for some customer <laughs> mine life. who've been from uh, the right hands of the Prince Albert in Monte Carlo. Oh, yeah. And uh, I make some uh, Prince Albert, I thought that was a cigar. <laughs> he's, a prince, <laughs> he's a prince of Monte Carlo. I know the guy. Yeah, uh, the guy. And, then, of and I'm working for, some, for Baba Johnson and Johnson Piasecka. And sure. I'm working for the designer of the Queen, you know, for the Lucy Campbell and Nina Campbell. And uh, one of the person... Uh, I know all these people, they're invite my friends. Me, <laughs> invite me here in, in uh, Florida for vacation in his hotel. And then, you know, I'm stuck <laughs> making my hotel. first tour in America. I've never <laughs> been before. I'm in his so happy Sarasota, And then I'm coming, you know, very well-known artist in Sarasota, Florida. And then from Sarasota, you end up you migrated out to Colorado. Oh yeah, this you're has in, been a long, near, long time after. Near you know. Aspen, and um, and I'm here in his studio near Aspen, Colorado. <laughs> and uh, actually, I look around. I just, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing here, but um, follow me around a little bit. And let's figure out you what some can, of this you stuff is. Make some design in No, that's shop. okay. I'm not going to touch anything. Special on. touch, signature. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign, sign my shirt, of course. <laughs> you want in red or you want in yellow? I, I don't have a lot of shirts, you know. I mean, you know, it's going to be more important. <laughs> really? Oh, yes. I'm going to let him. Oh, we go to make some special. I just for dropped you. a brush. Ah, this is no problem. We have many in other one. If okay, you see well, in the back. Here's the, here's the problem. He's going to. One of my real shirts. Okay, now we go to start here. I think so. We go to make vertical touch for you. <laughs> what? Let me see you now. Ah, ah, what I is going make, on? I go to make special for you. <laughs> and I'm going to explain you what I'm doing. Yeah, no kidding. I can't see it. Oh, yeah. I baby. told you I've only got like three sh real shirts. Okay. I got a lot of t-shirts. Now your shirt is have different value, you know. It certainly does. And uh, we signed 1760. <laughs> wow. And I'm going to put little ladder here. This is the symbol, the pass of the one world to another world. Voila. Mark, your decoration is done. <laughs> Voila. Here it is. I don't know what it is because I can't see it yet, but this it's is done. what I'm signing my painting after like the painting is finished in the corner of my canvas. So much for my shirt, but it's probably worth a lot of money if he signed it. <laughs> I might put it on like eBay or something. Yeah. Check out my eBay channel. I don't have one, but maybe I'll get one if I sell my shirt on it. Okay, so Stanislaus, as I look around your uh uh, I was going to say office, but studio here, not everybody has a studio, everybody has an office. <laughs> so, let me ask you something. I look around and I see all these paintings that are in different stages of finished. Uh, in other words, they're not finished, they're kind of like the projects in my garage. You know, I start one, I don't finish <laughs> it, I move to another one, I don't finish that one, and pretty soon I can't even put anything on my workbench because it's full of unfinished projects. But let me ask, how, how come some of these paintings are in different stages of being finished? You know, because I'm working in each different project, you know, at the same time. And some project like this one, wait already for like six years to be finished. I moved this painting, you know, from Sarasota, been with me in Europe. And uh, come back six in America. Six years? Somebody is waiting yeah. six years for their no, painting? No, this this is the problem. Okay, so yeah. Stanislaus, when you've been working six years on this one painting alone, right? Six yeah. years? No, but not right. this painting. I'm working on many things at the same time. Right, right. I'm always just adding the detail. You and changing is always something. Do you Here, change your mind yeah. uh, as you paint it or do you have it all in your mind from the beginning? 
No, I'm here from the beginning, the whole idea. But, you know, I'm just add some little detail, you know. I'm going to put the birds here, bird's nest here. I'm going to finish all this area here with the cascade of the water. Now, is that going to be village. different? Is that different than your first thought? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. So you, it, the painting that takes this long evolves over time. Yeah, the just general idea of the color, this green color, because I ah. want to make opposition to this gold framing. Oh. which coming from 17th century, it's Louis XIII, that means it's from 1695. Yeah, okay. I think the frame is probably worth more than my house. No, this framing is worth around the $50,000. Oh, the frame is only $50,000, no problem. How many of those do you want? So, um, let me ask you something. Whoa, <laughs> check yeah. this out. Can you get this? This is to uh, anybody that thinks they're going to come in here and uh -huh. take a painting while Stanislaus was here. Uh, this is called a silent approach. Um, yeah, there's uh, the neighbors can't hear it. It doesn't go boom, but you go kathunk dead. Is that what you do? Is that your security system? Oh, it's my security system, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I understand Stanislaus that if the client wants it, if they commission a painting from you, they can actually get the real palette you used when you were painting it, some of the empty tubes, I noticed you got the brush up there, one of the brushes. <laughs> that's fantastic. That, that's really fantastic. Sometimes you know, I'm giving one palette, you know, to the customer. If you am sell, I make the big sale, you know, my customer receiving special, you know, gift palette from the artist with the artist. Okay, that's great. This uh, is memory of the moment. You see the, yeah. after the death of the Picasso, uh, we, we have the line of the art dealer coming to the studio of the Picasso Dali to buy the palette of the master. It would be amazing. We have the big market for the palette. Okay, so if you die, can I have all the palettes and sell them? <laughs> so Stanislaus, I know you had two kids and <laughs> me too. And doing projects in my garage, they were always hanging around and then I'd go back in the garage and something doesn't look right because something happened. Now, tell, were the kids allowed in your studio when they were growing up, your children? Oh yes, it's coming so, in my studio. We have fun together because I'm teaching always the color. Yeah, but didn't they ever, did they ever stumble and fall into a painting or oh, anything? Oh, you know, I have one, you know, like this one, who is the souvenir of the old time. Because my daughter fell down in this painting. <laughs> Your daughter finally, fell down in the painting. And, and I have this painting never finished because it's the moment of the great time what I have with my two kids. <laughs> and this painting never been finished. And it's know, all scratched up. End. It's all scratched up everywhere, actually. So your daughter fell into it and they went $45,000. <laughs> and uh, it's never going to happen, $45,000 for this one. <laughs> But, it's, uh, it's my little souvenir of my young time yeah. and my kids, you know, because I'm just start my new basket and my daughter coming with her new dress and she just cleaned oh, this part of the painting and I um, just stopped the painting. I said, wow, it's the, it's the omen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is the omen. Don't finish that one, okay? Yeah. And there's something else uh, I'm not, I got to ask you about this. I cannot believe anybody is going to throw a dart in this room near any of this stuff. Well, you got to be kidding. What is this for? Oh, this is exactly what you see, you know. You have to be, this is like my painting. I have to be very precise where I'm going, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I have to fun, you know, have the fun to just move from the easel and play, do something, you know. Just like the game. So that's yeah. how you break your day up? You, yeah. you start throwing darts? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way. Stanislaus, can, can I take this box down off the shelf? Oh yeah, go ahead. You have the signatures. The box is signed. It's my perfume, Costca perfume. That looks like the one on my shirt. Does that look like my shirt? Yeah, almost, you know. I have to make like little dot. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Can I, can I open it? Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh -huh. Oh my god. Well, um, 
What is it? This is the Costca perfume, you know. I'm the maybe the last living artist who have their own perfume in the market <laughs> with own name. This is the bottle, the Crystal Lalique and the porcelain. It's uh, Limoges and uh, it's all signed piece. We make just 3,500 bottles and been uh, sold by the Cannibal Company in uh, Japan. Who buy my name and buy my painting and make this uh, special box. Okay, in, uh, well, I'm gonna put that back before I have to uh, make payments on that. <laughs> there you go. And being sold for four hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Okay. No, no problem. So I know we gotta go. I know your your wife is coming home. <laughs> he keeps doing my shirt. My poor shirt. I don't know if it's my poor shirt or my rich shirt now, I gotta tell you. But in any event, I wanna thank you very much for allowing me this look into an artist's private life in your studio. I mean this is this is like your inner soul here. I know, I look around, I can tell. It's like looking inside of you. You have my collection, here. you have my painting, you have all little Everything. things but I'm like it, you yeah. know. And you have all my family souvenir and my, my life, it's here yeah, because, but... you know, a studio for artists is not just the place where you're making the painting, right. it's the place where you're living one pass, you know, 10, 12 hours by day to make my job. And then I have to have my little happiness, I have my little secret in the studio, like you open the door, you have to find some little thing what you can find in any other place. And this is like the treasure box, you know, and you have always some surprise to find something. Oh yeah, this is to make, you know, the stretcher, you know, you have always something plastic glasses from the movie, you know, first, you know, 3 dimensional 3D glasses. 3D glasses. In case you, you wonder what was funny in it. Thing, you know. But that's a really personal look into a very well-known artist's life. I can't believe this. And behind you, which you've never seen, but he has all kinds of family portraits. Yeah, I, is that your mother I see over there? Yeah. You Portrait have. of your mother. And I happen to know from his wife that and when his children were growing up, because his children do like all children, it's dad, 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 that he did most of his painting at night. He'd stayed up all night, and that's how he painted. Uh, so you do live your life in the studio. Yeah. And I want to thank you again very much. And when I say it's just life, it's, it's, a, it's a part of life, and it is just life, and it's just it's your happening, life. Yeah. And it's, it's just one of these... Stanislas Koska is one of these ordinary people that I find throughout the world and he's an ordinary guy with extraordinary talent and it's just a lot of it's just so much here I've been overwhelmed doing this little segment for you and I, I again I've, and I'm like I'm, my sacred life of the little ordinary people I'm not in the front page I'm just doing big work and the silence yeah, it's, you have to do it in silence. He has classical music playing. That would drive me nuts, but I, hey, that's what he <laughs> paints by. I'd be playing country western or some good old oh, rock yeah. and roll. Then, uh, then I no. like <laughs> he's got classical music. I had to turn him, tell him to turn it down when I came in here so we could shoot this audio. But again, check out my YouTube, check out the channel, and don't forget to Go ahead and subscribe to me, leave me some comments, and also mollymark44 at yahoo.com. Let me know where you are because you never know where I am. It's Maui Mark, it's just life. Well, I certainly hope that you enjoyed meeting Stanislaus and getting a tour of his home and his studio as much as I did. I, I feel really privileged that I was able to uh, get in and up close with uh, a man like this. And it just lets us all uh, realize that everything that happens and how you end up wherever you end up, it's just life. And that's the way he looks at his youth and his journey is... It's just life. And he doesn't really give interviews and certainly allow people into his studios. And you might wonder, well, how do I, how did I get into that? And I think it has something to do with, 
if you're a little bit wacky like I am, people kind of let their guard down and say, oh, what the heck, you know, it's just Maui Mark. And so away we go. So I'm glad you watched it. I hope you enjoy the other segments with other people of all kinds. And it's just life. Subscribe to the channel and send me some comments. Let me know what you think about my interviews and perhaps sex you have some people that you might want me to look into their life and interview them in the meantime it's maui mark <laughs>